Well, how are you getting on? This is your host here, Tom O'Mahony, for number uh, 67 of Buckshot for Friday the 20th of the 7th, 2018. How in the jizz, Zary? You well? You good? Friday, lads, you're out the fucking gap, huh? You're out the gap, or you listen to this on Saturday, half hung over. I fucking hope you are. Did you have a good one? Did you? Did you enjoy it? Fucking hell, there's nothing like Friday, sure there's not. Well, I mean... There's nothing at all like Fridays anymore as a comedian because your Fridays are kind of like your Tuesdays, if that makes any sense. Anyway, driving on. How are you keeping? I won't keep you long like that. That's for the Ramble Pod. Any of that shy talking. Simple people seem to like the Ramble Pod this week. Uh, by no uh, by no exact means, people seem to like the fact that I had a row with the dog. I, I didn't think anybody would actually comment. I, if anything, I thought they'd go, ah, what the fuck you at? How unprofessional. But it would seem genuinely, via Instagram and Snapchat, people have been messaging me going, I kind of fucking like that. One chap in Fermanagh, I put up a picture of what, he just took a picture going, I, I listened to a lot of podcasts and that's, uh, that's definitely a first. If nothing else, we're groundbreaking. Fuck it. Um, just to let you know, um, I'm in the International Comedy Club all weekend. By all weekend, I'll be there tonight and two shows tomorrow night. But sure, look at I have more gigs next week lined up. I'm in, I think, the Comedy Cellar. I might be in Camden Street. But most importantly, next Thursday, I will be hosting the 7.30 show at the Vodafone Comedy Festival with the... Sorry, I'm trying to hold back a cough. That's what I'm trying to fucking do here. I've still got a bastard fucking cough. I'm on like about the third cough bottle. I'd say I have AIDS. I'd say I'm about to drop down dead with the fucking AIDS. So that's why I'm kind of stalling there, speaking, almost like a bit Pat Kenny or like I'm about to fall off something. Um, but yeah, at the Vodafone Com- Comedy Festival, Carter and Lynch will be on the lineup. Fred Cook and Farmer Michael and Kathleen will be on the lineup. Could you get a more culty? I, I actually have a, a, a specific stage jacket I'm going to wear for this that is, is embodies country. You'll see it on Instagram. If you don't come to the show, don't worry about it. You'll see it on Instagram. It's It can't not go on photographed, basically. Uh, moving swiftly along. Anyway, that's the gig stuff and all the rest of it. Swiftly along to our guest today. Very good friend of mine. We worked together on a show called Demo and Ivor. Uh, and like that, we got a good old fucking chat in. I haven't seen him in ages. And Jesus, he's become a father and everything since. I, I'm, I'm absolutely mad about this. But we had such good crack when we were on set together. He's one of the good guys. We talked about his time in Fair City. We talked about our crack on Damon Ivor and how the movie and all the rest of it was a bit different. Um, how I wasn't in the movie. <laughs> and also the fact that he's gone on now to be an acting coach and facilitator. Is a facilitator, if I said the right word. Probably fucking well not. I apologise. But you know what, lads? A very good friend of mine. You're going to enjoy him. Please have the crack with Louis McGee. There's nothing, and nobody that listens to my one, because I'm guessing the people that started maybe listening, they got filtered. By now, we're up in 60-odd episodes. The people that are there now go, yeah, yeah, I have no complaints. I don't, they're not the sort of people <laughs> that write in at all. And mates of mine that have podcasts, they get whinges. And actually, yes, the, the, the Ramble Pod that I did, it was a question that came through on Snapchat from uh, Aaron Darcy, the DJ. He went, you ever get any shit about, you know, non-PC stuff on stage or on watching? I'm like, no. Nobody does. <laughs> I was trying and to I say, the emails. I say loads of shit that would upset people, but nobody comes near me because they got there's no point. Yeah, there's know, no. Point. Caps the email title. Like how dare you? I was like I'll open this. What's going on? Let's get you in my spam. <laughs> but the thing, like, I, there's no point because they know just the ignorant pig that I am is going to go. I may as well be pissing into the wind with this fella because I'm not going to get any pleasure out of him because I'll just go. Yeah, do you know what? Here's a big bag of fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Here's a big bag of fuck off. Take that home with and stand that for me, there, will it? Oh, gee, like the one and only time we had a. Uh, a mad bitch came up to myself and she was a mad bitch like um, she'd lost her fucking marbles altogether in a comedy club over in Casa Bar turns out she'd been on a lot of drugs since her divorce and she pretty much thought everything that every comedian was saying that night was directed at her and not at all for the rest of the crowd like. and even she came up to me and the other comedian who she was whinging at he was like I know I know and she just turned to me and she goes ah, it's I says yeah yeah listen lady there's a bar over there and I'm getting there so you can fuck cleanly off I just couldn't deal with it I'm like no no that sounds real but I like 
Fuck yeah. I mean, there's tunnel vision loans around. It's going. Oh yeah, yeah. But some people are like that. Like you probably found it. Like they, like especially uh, like with Damo and I were going on at the time. Like there was probably people who genuinely thought Spuddy was Spuddy. Like yeah, there was a. Uh, oh, there's people there. I was asking where my orange hat is, and I was like, I don't wear it. <laughs> Since then, I have got an orange hat. <laughs> like I don't know what was saying. Like he's like, ah, oh, with my girlfriend. Meg's like, Henny's one euro. Let's buy that for the crack. And I walk around, I was like, oh, shit, there's a bit of a gap for wearing this. <laughs> yeah, and you put it on the back of your head. <laughs> and like, the whole thing for a while. And then eventually, it got all worn down now. It just looks like an armor. I wear it now normally. But people are going, oh, you're wearing your orange hat. I was like, I just shouldn't wear this, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, like, it, you might as well put a target on your back. <laughs> so I was asking, yeah, uh, that was almost funny as well. Like, how do you eat so much? I don't oh, know, yeah, he's yeah. always scoffing. That was his thing. He was always was scoffing. Always yeah. eating. And then... Anything to do with field, I was going, do you want me to mess with the field? And I was like, what do you mean? Like that. There was one scene in the fourth season where uh, the kids are having dinner. I was like, Spuddy, give them that food. Oh, and yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Tracy's, uh, Tracy Emer's carried that was like, I had a jack of cakes and beans, and I just went, okay, just dip them in. <laughs> <laughs> started eating them. And since then, with um, season two and with the movie as well, uh, the little the, the family, they're all, they're all sisters. And any time they come on set, and we're on the same day, they also have a box of jack of cakes for me. Jesus Christ. <laughs> and you go, here you go. I was like, oh, what's the story? <laughs> so like, it's a running gag now to give me a box of Jaffa Cakes. It's, it's really What's the combo of Jaffa Cakes and beans like? I just had them on the table at the time. I was like, what would Spuddy do? I was like, you put them together. And I just went, is it all right? It's all right. You have to invent a new thing. Like, I think you <laughs> need to invent a new thing. I've been on it in that season. It's fucking burner, isn't it? Like, as, oh, but being on set, there's grub everywhere too. Like, And of course, your character's thing is scoffing oh, all indeed. the time. Like, Same in uh, Fair City for a while. Uh, Dan's up started eating for ages. And uh, Dave Sullivan, who plays Deco, always called me the Brad Pitt of uh, Fair City with Dan's. And not for being like Brad Pitt, because in Ocean's Eleven, he's constantly eating. And oh, every yeah, yeah, every yeah. Every time we see Dan's snack box, fat and sausage, I was like, yeah, hi, Anne. <laughs> I stopped doing that intentionally. <laughs> yeah, the same ones where it's just the thing I had to look, I was making a sandwich in the scene, and I was only meant to be creating it. Yeah. And by the end of it, I cooked the next scene. But I just lashed the bread on it, the butter on the bread. I was like, I've nothing else. And I was like, <laughs> The sugar ball in the middle of the table. No. <laughs> just went, sugar sambo. Here we go. And I was getting classic. The sugar must be in there for about six fucking months. What's it mean? Was it just prop sugar? Like, it, it was, was just, just prop. It was there. It was not meant to be. Did you break it up with the fucking spoon <laughs> first? Like. <laughs> a chunk came out. I was like, that wasn't cubes going in. I just, <laughs> <laughs> I just ate it. I, just, I, I stopped doing that now. I know I have gigs. But I'm like, no. Stop eating. I'm trying to be healthy. When did you... Was Versity the first first big thing you were on? TV thing, I should say. Yeah. Um, that was way back, wasn't it? That like was back were... in 2007. Yeah, 2007. Was it? Because I still have my very first script at home. Have you? Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's in a little box around me that are acting and Was it written stuff. phonetically, like with a Dublin accent, or was it just written normal no, English and you were allowed to put your own, a strong accent on it? Like? No, I actually had one line and it was just a yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. We, yeah, we met up with him. <laughs> It was, the, it was the introduction of the bishops, and we met um, Mark Halpin, the character Mark Halpin, who was played by, you know, Ryan O'Shaughnessy. Yeah. Just sang for us in the, Euro, uh, the Eurovision. And we met him outside of um, a chipper, and we started on him. And we one line, we'll just go, yeah, square right up to him. <laughs> we got there on the day, and then the director was like, right, and cut that, and cut that, and cut that. And yeah, was the final cut, and went, no. <laughs> so yeah, it turns out, no. Me lying. I was going to stand in the background, look intimidating. <laughs> And uh, that was it. I was gone for a while. The last got kept on, and I was gone for a while. And then I got brought back, and I was like, more alone. I was like, this is actually deadly. This is like surreal, like getting brought back into it. And yeah. But yeah, that was back in 07. Before that, in 2004, I joined the youth theatre. Yeah. I wanted to do acting. All my mates could play the guitar, they could play the drums. They were in a samba band. I hate them they were in the samba. And they were in uh, the Paris Day Parade. Up with all these Brazilian dancers, like exactly you know, the flowers, the whole chivang going on. Feathers, flowers, feathers. And he won, I think he won the spirit of the, of the parade, so he got the best float, basically. What? And I'm going, fuck, I haven't got a talent. <laughs> <laughs> this is back in 04, I was like, play yeah. video games, yeah, make me money. <laughs> oh my God, I missed the boat on that, anyway. <laughs> like, <laughs> had you set up a YouTube channel back then? <laughs> so I had done that, man. I would have been, would have been the PewDiePie more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the PewDiePie. Far saying racist things, like, you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Oh no, you probably would have been a little racist at that stage. Yeah, when you get so powerful, you can be whatever you want to be like. Oh, I'm not going to touch that now. now. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, back in the I, um, I said it to me, mate. And he went, there might be acting in the Reco. Reco is this local youth uh, hall in Volume 1. And he went, yeah, there's, um, there's youth theatre. I was like, fuck it, I'll go. Yeah. And I went, I met up that evening or that afternoon with the director. 
And she went, yeah, I just come back on um, at six o'clock. I was like, cool. Right. Went in, sat in the car on my phone. <laughs> so fucking afraid of these turkey people Please in the room. Speak. Yeah, I was at the old lock, you know. <laughs> and then um, these people who we did not know would soon become some of my closest friends ever are in that circle. I'm How did you them. just go, I act him? It was just because he's got a youth theatre. It's, um, youth theatre is a uh, workshop for drama. Youth theatre is a big thing in Ireland at the moment. Yeah. And now uh, I'm training as a drama student there now. I went and got the training to go back to my roots and just yeah. give to the young people now because that's where I got my break as youth theatre. I was like, if I got that from youth theatre, I'd love the fact that if I can train myself to learn how to facilitate workshops with young yeah. people, I'd love to give, hopefully give that chance, I'd give that inspiration to one other young person, at least one young person, they go, yeah, I want to go for that audition, I want to do that. Take it. I want to do, I come in and play these games with Louis and learn these things about acting and how these like styles of acting, like improv and like writing and all that. Like I've, I've learned how to do script writing and all for young people right. and work with them. So instead of me going in with a script, here's your lines, I go, what do you want to say? What's your story you want to yeah, say? Yeah, yeah. What do you want to put on stage and tell the people? And it comes from that, an amalgamation of um, improv, scenes, just going, um, make character. That's it. Like, I'm breaking it down into like, specific yes, It's yeah, not this. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's a whole, um, it's branched out, really fleshed out. So it feels natural and not like skilled for a young person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And at the end of it, like, I was up in Dundalk there recently, and we came, we came up, do you want to do a soap opera? Bring it back around, do you want to do a soap yeah. opera on stage? And uh, so they made this huge thing of this uh, mafia in uh, Dundalk, not Dundalk, we called it Fun Dark was the code name for it, we called it Fun Dark. Yeah. And yeah, it was this whole conspiracy, the guards have no control of this town, and it was a soap opera, like EastEnders. And I was like, right, we're going to make up a dush dush moment. So yeah. At the end of EastEnders, like, doof, doof. what would be a good dush dush moment? And the people came up with long lost sisters, twin twins that don't look like twins, but they're identical, but they're twins that are coming to take over the mafia. And it's like, <laughs> I was like, I couldn't come up with any of this stuff. And you write it down and you give it to them. They're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're all going this way there and that way there. And I'm like, just remember, guys, this is you. Yeah, yeah. This is not me. They're off to the race. This is it. all you. I'm just, I'm, I'm facilitating all this. Mm. I'm opening the door for you to go and just let you know that you can do this. Yeah, you can have a go. Nothing's off. And it's not skill. Like, sorry. <sighs> sorry about that. Uh, it's not skill. So it's not like come in, right answer, wrong answer. It's, what do you think? What do you think this is? Have a is? crack, like. It's like. There's no wrong answers here. I'm asking you, what do you think this is? What do you think is perceived here? What do you see in this scene? What do you see in this character? And once you realise it's not like you're going into a history lesson and, and if you say the wrong thing, it's like, actually, no. It's like, wow, did anybody else see that? And people, someone else put their hands up. That person will go, oh, I'm not the only one that's seen yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really well, if you good. give them the mechanics of going, look, this is how. Yeah. And you, because I suppose you just don't know from the outside. You're just watching telly, you're going, that's telly. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's like looking at the weather and going, it's raining. But then, of course, a meteorologist comes in and goes, I'll tell you why it's raining. <laughs> you know, and it's... Enlighten me. It, you know what I mean? It, it, it's a good way of breaking it down. It's, it, there's not more, there's nothing more rewarding than seeing somebody who's never in their life. And then you'll find a nugget or two, too, I'd too, uh, imagine. I've You're seen going, some Jesus people, Christ. Yeah, I've seen some people who are like me when I started contained in the yeah, yeah. didn't want to speak. I, that, back to that first workshop I went to. Um, I left halfway through. Did I you? A five minute break. I fucking bolted out the door. <laughs> I went to my friend. Well, I went, but I'm, I'm too afraid. He's come back with me. And my friend Rob and uh, best mate Wes came with me. And Rob left and Wes came. And Wes is now in Ferry City. We both were in Ferry City at the same time. Yeah, well, he plays Doug. Right. He's still in Ferry City to this day. We both went for the same audition and um, he got it. But then he said, no, what, we want to make the bishops. And then we all caught that as well. We all went for them parts. Like, and then, yeah, like, I, I don't know. It's kind of thing we always have a joke about. It. I was like, what would you, like, imagine we never went to that, like, workshop. Do you think yeah. we'd, like, we'd be here now, like, and on the telly? And, what would like, you be doing? Like, he went off. He's done, like, he's done, like, a one-man, like, a phenomenal one-man show we've done as well. And, uh, like, or, like, I've done the film and all. And, like, what would we have done if we never went to that what workshop? What do you reckon you'd be doing? I don't know. That's the thing. I don't know. I never... What were people working at around you? Do you know? Yeah, the point, my dad was working in, uh, he was managing hotel, uh, hotels, hotel, he's managing a uh, restaurant. He's a, just, he quit that as well. He got bored of that. Right. He went off and uh, joined Rent to Kill. He said, I'm, <laughs> his joke was, I'm sick of saving rats, so I want to go kill them. Yeah. And then uh, he's sick of being a manager. And then Less so, pressure too, though, being a manager of a restaurant. <laughs> See, when I had to, he became a manager of Rent to Kill. <laughs> he did, of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. He literally went full time yeah. straight away. He went, ah, oh, well, like, but he went off. He's done some, like, deadly things, like, from doing Rent to Kill. And my mum works in um, works in a hotel, um, supervisor. 
and like the morning shift. And Sounds all. to me like you would have been manager or something. Probably done something, yeah. Something in the catering around. industry or the service industry, you would have been somewhere like. Well, you, they work in an arcade now before I first took off. Oh, did you? They worked in an arcade, yeah. That's right up your street, all right. And uh, it was just. It, was bef- it, it was wasn't be- Dr. Kirk, he's not a good time before it was. Have you, have you got uh, origin story of that range of <laughs> just start doing Shakespeare in the middle of, of, work, of your workplace? The, um, yeah, it's working in arcade. It was when the arcade was starting to die down and gambling was getting brought in. Yes, yeah, so yeah. Upstairs, upstairs was uh, the poker machines were left table at the AI table and all like that. Yeah, yeah. And they used to have pool tables, but they were closed. And downstairs was all the, the machines, the arcade machines. So every so often, I'd just sit upstairs in the boot. You know, we need to cash out, we'd learn how to cash out machine and all that. And then every so often, the pool table's not on. I was like, no, get down. Like, you're, over eight, you're under 18, get out of here, Louis. You're not looking up there. And, uh, what age were you? You must be only young fellas, well. 17. Right. We started uh, the day, uh, two days after Halloween, we were starting then. And on Halloween, me and my mate were already uh, dyed our hair blonde for them. <laughs> so I just bleach blonde hair going in the wow. morgue. My girlfriend just dumped me. I'm a bit depressed mess going in. <laughs> Oh, it was this skinny red eyed blonde haired fella like, how's it going and uh, it was fun there were some good stories out of it like um, do you ever see uh, we called him the Elvis or does we change put the 20, the 20 cent in on the, the, the slide in the, they yeah. made a fucking game show of that have you seen oh, that oh yeah they, like, tipping point yeah and the, the big coins drop down and all. What the f- I wouldn't watch it but when it's on I'm glued I, <laughs> I found myself being glued because it was on at ourselves mother's house like and I walked in and it was like what the fuck Stop! They made a TV show and they're so tense and everything. Imagine you're going. Yeah, this is a load of five. Fifteen minutes later, I'm going. Ooh, you nearly got that double. You nearly got that double there. <laughs> go, what have I? What have I fucking become? Now? I know. Yeah. I was saying that when I was in a uh, part of the Yaka years ago. I went over to visit my granddad before he passed, and I was like, I had to go over and see him. Like, well, my cousin knew we had passed. I was like, I had to go over and see him. And then when he comes, I don't watch TV. Yeah. And we went to his wife walked in the pub, and we sat down, and they have the ITV playing because it's where all the like um, English people go to drink, yeah. Irish people go to drink, and I was like sitting there, bent into it. Girlfriend's talking away to my own family. I'm going, yeah, 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 good second, hang on. <laughs> oh, this is watching Tipping Point. That's it. Tipping Point, oh, Tipping Point, and the chase. <laughs> and I'm oh. fed. I'm on holidays, and I'm going. It's a sad state of affairs, isn't it? Like? And I'm on, I'm on autopilot. What you want to drink? I have a Malibu and red. <laughs> what? Oh, you don't do red, yeah? Uh, <laughs> like red wine? I was like, no, no, no. Just get the Malibu Jeez, and white. You introduced me to Malibu and. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god but they were only like I couldn't drink that shit before I before until I was steaming yeah. I couldn't drink that it's, shit if you, you, can't, you can't learn a stomach one no but well, you'd start straight off on the vodka oh, it's just because I didn't like beer at the time now I, I can only drink Guinness now <laughs> I'm, really? I'm a Guinness man now yeah can't drink anything else can't drink a lager can't drink can't drink spirits anymore I black out on spirits oh I'm the very same I've learned my lesson where uh, yeah. I, lose, I literally lose noise I wake up I don't know where I am. We're, we were on a few of those lights, nights together yeah. and we've only photographs the next day and go, oh Jesus Christ. Are we smoking indoors? <laughs> How the fuck did that happen? Are we smoking on that bus? Yeah. You don't the, remember the that? The party bus. How did, like, that was no holes barred that. That I was remember, the start of the night. Yeah. That was, that was the just start the of the night. <laughs> Jesus H. Christ. Like, that was the start of the night. Oh, that was a... There was some good nights with the old demo and everything. Wasn't I remember that night as well. That was, a, that was the end of season one. We were in the Beacon. And, yes. Uh, and I remember uh, Rick Mayo was there. And I was like, I'm gonna meet him. I'm gonna meet him. Big, tall, Rick man. I was like, oh my god, he's because a few of y'all went to meet him when he was filming. Yeah. So I went, oh fuck that. I'm yeah, because you're never in. I'm my week off. I'm, enjoying, I'm bollocks. I've been three weeks in the truck here. And I was like, no, I'll meet him at the rap party. And I'm standing beside him, and then he just turned to uh, Andy and went, I'm gonna go to bed. I went, no, I'm not gonna annoy him. I'll, uh, I'll meet him in season two. Yeah. Wah, wah. That didn't happen. Brown bread. Yeah. No <laughs> crack. I remember mean, we were on the phone to each other about an hour after that news broke. Remember yeah, that? yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the thought that went through my head was, the big male pass there, he went, oh, fuck. Yeah. And then before that ended, I went, oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Season two. Yeah. And then I went, oh, fuck, don't think that. Yeah. But you, had, you will think immediately, selfishly, like, he'll go. Because that was, like, when he, like, with Jesus hanging out with him on set was something unreal. Like. It was, like, but he's just a powerful, some man to horse the fags, though. Jesus, yeah, he, he quit drinking. He just took up a different. Uh, yeah, he said it himself. Yeah. He goes, I can't, he, he couldn't drink anymore because of the tablets he was on mm. because of the crash. But he was like, because I'm probably smoking way too much. And that that night when we were standing outside the beacon, he bought me three fucking whiskeys. He goes, you're going to drink these. I went, what? <laughs> He's going to drink vicariously through you. I went, oh, okay, yes, of course, Mister. So Mil- <laughs> if he bought me a gallon of petrol, I would have drank it too. Like, to be honest with you, but it was that. It was that was his reason behind it, and he went. 
It was, he, was, he actually said, like, I'm shit to say because I can't be looking at you. You knew what he was thinking, yeah. like. He was being polite about it, but you knew full well he'd give not finer to be on the lash, like. Yeah, and we were getting, we were getting well. Oh, well, you had dropped the handbrake. Oh, I was, yeah. Uh, I, I was upstairs asleep for the first half hour. I was bollocks. I didn't get home the night before till, like, nine in the morning. I was out on the right. lash. I ended up in, like, a random gap drinking as well. The people I didn't even know. And I was like, oh, get me home. But, but even during the, the Republic of Telly days, like. Oh, the, yeah. Like the, the the parties afterwards were fucking. Filming days, yeah. The, just, like, just the Sunday filming for the Monday episode. Like there, was, like, there was fuck all money in it, but Monday night you were hitting, we were hitting coppers, we're like, hitting coppers, and yeah. knocking the bollocks <laughs> off coppers. Like. They were good nights, and even like the live filming, so they bring us out on stage sometimes just for the end. I was like, oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Buzz down, I'm like, let's get them taxis in. Oh man, yeah, that was like six years ago, 2011. 2012, 2011, yeah. 2000, yeah, it would have been, because 2000, yeah, it would have been. 2011, I remember, uh, torn 21, day of my 21st birthday, I uh, left Fair City, that was my last uh, episode, I was like, that was like, Dan's, I was going to uh, Spain. Oh, and, yeah, he uh, had to get out of Dodge, did he? Yeah, <laughs> uh, uh, buried in the body and all that. So how long, how long, when did it take for Denzo to wear off, and then Spuddy to kick in? Were you still, do you still get, like, were you still getting called Denzo? It wasn't, it wasn't getting called Denzo, like, People don't know his name. Oh, it's him. Oh, that guy was like going. Through. Right. It's like a forgetful mother going through their siblings forget the right name. It was like, whatever that, pron- that, pronoun they could think of. Uh, all I got was. Something more. <laughs> <laughs> you all. All I got a lot was, uh, you're not meant to be in Spain. Because that's uh, everywhere I went. That's all I got. You're not meant to be in Spain. It, like, it, it reveals, because, and I, like, I literally, I was only in it for a second. Once, I was a solicitor. And two scenes, and both scenes ended up with me getting up from a restaurant table or a bar table after giving. In inverted commas, advice to somebody. <laughs> Scene opening. So I'll talk to you next week. Good luck. <laughs> and I was like, thanks, card. And up out the door. Twice. Twice I did that. And I got like two weeks work out of that. Yeah. And that was it. And my, my two weeks were gone. But I, like, it was only when talking with people, like the likes of Eric Lawler, um, who plays Cahill, he was like, uh, fucking every part of the country, people watch, like you wouldn't think people watch so. But something like 400,000 people a week watch. Yeah, it's huge numbers. Huge yeah. numbers. Huge numbers. It's a tenth of the population nearly. Like. Yeah, and like it's, like people love the show. Like a lot, a lot of people come out as well. I mean, it's not even like with the younger crowd. They go, I don't watch it. I, I've realised, according to the people I've met on night no one in Ireland watches the show. But yeah. But that mass do. Yeah. yeah I don't yeah, watch yeah. it, but my mom watches it. And then they'll list off, you know they list off yeah, the, yeah. the last three years of everything that happened. Yeah, and they just go, yeah, yeah, you yeah. watch it, you watch it. It's okay. <laughs> it's all right. Yeah. <laughs> But um, yeah, like a lot of people watching, they get that a lot. Like, yeah, you're meant to be in Spain, and I remember what that when I was out in Torreviaca, I was <laughs> in Spain, and someone went and ran to a male. Oh, family. brilliant! Yeah, anyway, yeah, yeah. And just it was the autopilot. They went, you're meant to be in Spain, and I went, I, I fucking am in Spain. <laughs> what are you saying? <laughs> and the Lord, I got to use that in my life. Like, yeah, say that. Don't I, tell anybody. I was right? joking about. It. I was like, fucking am in Spain. What are you talking about? <laughs> and then the how did you how did you get into because Demo Niver started off in obviously Republic of Telly first. How did you end up in that? Uh, was were you just thrown into it? Did, did Andy I, um, know you? Like no. What happened was I um, we finished up there in uh, Fair City, and then there was nothing. I was drawing fell off a wall for ages. I was like, oh crap! Like life hit me, and like, <laughs> like oh shit! All right. And uh, I was living in my grandmother's at the time. I'd mm-hmm. uh, I'd left um, me and my ex girlfriend at the time. We left our house. We want we were getting we didn't want to live there anymore. And then we said we'll live apart, save up and get somewhere new. Yeah. That didn't work out in the end, we broke up and all that. But uh I got a first I was still working at the time and I got I got this uh voicemail on my phone. Yeah. And it's kind of asking that like living in the United there was this real don't use the phone for mobiles because there's people ringing the mobile and the thing was through the roof. So unwritten rule, don't ring mobiles. Wasn't blocked, but don't ring them. Oh at the oh, at the landline. Yeah. Right. And I got this voicemail going, um, hi, this is well, from um ah. Oh, I don't, want to, I don't want to accidentally say like it. Was it an agency or? Yeah, fish Pond, is that an agency, is it? Or is that not? Italian Coffee owns Fish Pond. And I signed up to Fish Pond when I was 19 for the free thing. Yeah. And Same I forgot as that, all yeah. about it. I forgot all about it. It was a month free trial. And there was a headshot and a contact number for me. Mm. And I got a phone call off someone who works there. And uh, it was a mobile number to ring back on. I was like, oh, um, I've no credit. What do we do? What do we do? I was like, I won't ring it. Fuck, it's probably nothing. I said, fuck, I'll, I'll took the call. I was like, yeah, um, it's uh, Republic of Telly. We're likely to be in a uh, Damo and Ivor. I was like, oh, what? Uh, 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 Did you know what it was at the time? I knew what Damo and Ivor was. I knew yeah, yeah. he was drinking. And um, one of the makeup artists in Fair City 
And she was always going, that's going to be you. I was like, oh, stop, it's not going to be me. He's like, that's you. That's that's you right now. But it's going to be you. I was like, oh, it's not. Stop. You know, stop messing with me. And uh, so I rang back and he gave me a number. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I hung up. I was like, I didn't fucking remember that number. Ah, now I've got to ring this casting agent again. Who didn't feel happy with me ringing on a personal number again. So I've got to do it again. Wrote it down. And uh, yeah, it was a number for the, the fucking telly uh, offices. So I rang them. I was like, hi, this is Lewis from Gay, you are trying to get in touch with me. I was like, yeah, we, um, do you like it to play this part? Um, then was best friend's buddy. I was like, yeah, yeah, getting all amped up. And then came the dreaded question I had, can you drive? I can't drive. <laughs> no, I can't. Silence, I went, oh, fuck. I can ride a horse. What do, what do you need? <laughs> and he went, no, we walk around. Like, yeah, if you're available in um, Mondello Park this Monday, this is on the Friday. So he named this Monday, I'll send you on the script. I was like, deadly. Right. So what happened was... Um, is that James Cotter, was it? No? No, it was uh, Alex. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. She, um, that's who was on the phone there. Alex Rooney, is it? I think it is, yeah. yeah. And uh, so what happened was, they were looking for this part, to fill this part of Demo's best friend. And the uh, co-writer of the sketches, uh, Jules, yeah. was a fan of Fair City. Ah, and she went and right. Ran. This, this the story I was told was, that he goes, look, this fella, just trust me on this, get this fella in. Mm. And uh, never done comedy before. This happened. I've always done uh, theatre, so Straight city plays. Right? Always, uh, yeah, the uh, dark, serious stuff, and then fair city sitcom, not co- not comedic stuff. And I got sent to me, and I said, "I should break." Right, sent me to my friends. They was all around me. All the lads there having a laugh. And I'm like, "Oh my god, what have I fucked up doing this?" And I remember okay, getting uh, drove out to Mandela, and uh, saying, "What's the story?" He was saying, "Lord Andy, what's the crack?" He wasn't in his gear at the time. I was like, yeah. I was like this is him, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, got into our gear. I got in, got down the famous Buddy Shell for actually mm-hmm. looking. I was on the Crystal Maze. And it was just, it was a blast. It was just amazing. Was that the driving lesson? That was the driving lesson. Yes, thing, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And just all little things. Like, right, I got to do a donut around, and I'm like, all right, cool. And he did it around. So I thought they were going to just practice it for us. I was like, oh, shit. I'll just. So he went with the first take when I just, it was completely like, I put my hand up as if I was going to box the car because I'm in a donut around. Yeah, and yeah. I was like, like holy shit! Like I don't even remember doing that. That was like the first take, but it was really fun. And from there on, we done all our sketches, done music videos, and it was a uh, screw from there. Really fun stuff. Like mad. Look back on that video has nearly three quarters of a million views. Does it? Yeah, I yeah. looked at some of them, and it's like mother. Oh, oh Jesus like Christ! Six years ago. Because I think I probably came in a sketch or two after that. Then my room was weird. Out like I kind of knew Jules through Facebook, through mm. comedy people. You know when you end up being friends. And an invite came in to to the launch of the album. Well, you mentioned at the album launch. Yes. The bar, yeah. And I only, I sure I wouldn't know anybody, Jules. And herself was, my missus was managing a nightclub in town and she was heading out to work and she was living only around the corner in Ranelagh from the hotel. And she went, there's free drink town. I went, I'll be there in two seconds. <laughs> I think I pay for drink, what? <laughs> so I rocked up and I just got steaming and just had crack with her and Andy. And Andy mm. stayed in character. He comes over and he stays yeah, in. Like, yeah, he was in and I started yeah. pretending to be really pop because I'd just been talking to his brother. <laughs> and I just thought, you absolute knack. You can <laughs> fuck right back. You look like tetanus on legs. <laughs> and you could see him breaking his bollocks laughing. I got proceeded to get drunk, waddled home. And I remember I was down at my mother's about four or five days later. And the mobile rang. And it was, it was James or somebody like that. Or, or even Jason. And just went, yeah, listen, we want you to be in the thing. But he was kind of saying it half tick. I think they want they had their idea on somebody, but yeah. who the fuck was this fella? <laughs> and they knew I did a bit of stand up or whatever. They were going, he's acting in fuck all. But it came up and we did the first sketch and it was the drinking one. Everybody's drinking, I think. Oh, not everybody's drinking. Sessions. It was sessions. Sessions. Yeah. sessions. Oh, that got roaring at me for a while. Sessions. Yeah, I got, I got that too for a while. Yeah, that was good, Craig. Bizarre. <laughs> but then the, it came around then. The, it was somewhat infamous between the two of us when we had to re-audition for our own parts on the TV show. Wow, that was like... That was some nerve wracker. The scariest moment of my life was that. I was like, oh my God, like, what? <laughs> Couldn't believe it, yeah. It was like, I understand you said it was just like, it was just like, it was like protocol today. It, it, had to, it had to be done, yeah. You got to put it out. It's almost like a union thing. You yeah. have to put it out to the masses I'm in case like, there's wow. a better version of us already out there. Like, I'm getting pals like, yeah, so many people coming in with Spuddy. I was like, what do you mean there's so many people coming in with Spuddy? <laughs> I got the same shit about Tarkin, shit, yeah. <laughs> in my head going, oh, who's going to come in? Like, like who's, who, who could do it? I'm going through all these big names in my head. What if people come in? Like, what's going to happen? <laughs> uh, Nerve wracking. Uh, and then you bollocks. You absolutely, like, when it came through, then finally, when we got our parts, and I didn't know, I was in the UK, visiting ourselves' parents at the time, 
And you says, uh, uh, you, you didn't say yes or no because you found out before me. And you text me going, did you uh, check the old email there, Tom? <laughs> and of course I had no room. Like, and we're out, I remember we were looking at some fucking antiques fair or something. I was bored off my tits. And I went, right, I don't give a fuck what's what. <laughs> Drive home now because I had no roaming on the phone. Like, Get home. I need to open a fucking email. And you had gone, ah, don't take your time, Tom, there. It's, uh, something might have come through there. Uh, <laughs> I don't remember this at all. You were like, because apparently you weren't allowed to tell me, oh. but you had said, Tom's in, but don't be, t- you can't tell him, right? But mm. you, ha- so you didn't tell me, you fucker, but you just kind of went, I, I'd check your email if I was you. I kept like, your word, yeah. Yeah, you kept your word. You like spam there from pig fucker on? Yeah. Something else might come through. <laughs> There'd be a few ways. Uh, we either there going on, we check the email there, we get a we, free one. <laughs> and we never got a, we got a scene together, but I did get to play you. You did, yes. <laughs> Quite infamous, saying you like if he's pointed out, people go, "It's not you, actually." Yeah, yeah. It's uh, yeah. I was wrapped. You wrapped me in the very next day. He went, "Oh fuck, he's not wrapped." Yeah. <laughs> Did another bit where we were we were checking the house, yeah. and he went, "We're gonna have to shoot this all from behind the back of his head because there's no way we're gonna." Two shot from your just a single on your shoulder. Yeah, or something yeah, like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I, but it was funny. I, I was like, "How do I do this funny walk?" And whatever way, because you're you're, you're like a shoe size yeah. smaller than me or something. I was like, "Oh no, I can totally do it because these shoes are actually killing me. This is grand." <laughs> But well, them shoes had big, thick insoles they in did. as well. Because the real insoles fell out of them. I was, like, I was walking on the stones, like, I need insoles. Got these big, like, uh, look at look, look at pimp from the 70s <laughs> sole. Like, those big stilts you are, like, like goldfish going around them. And the rock. <laughs> <laughs> big, big, thick insoles. They're still, they're still in the shoes to this day. <laughs> are they? They're the biggest fucking shoes I've ever worn in my life. And I remember that, yeah, you was like looking at when you comes out, put a little, uh, like a little dance on, we run away. I remember you just like, a little head bob. Yeah, well, I didn't, I, because I said, all right, I went, that's actually, that'll do fine. That'll do fine, Tom, because if you did it again, what else would you do? There's, we don't know what to tell you to do. Like, well, I can do a handstand. Yeah, it's, but it's like, we didn't instruct Louis how to do that anyway, so <laughs> that's your fucking run now. We never had a scene talking, but, um, pardon me, sorry. We never had a scene talking, but we did a meeting once in. Hey, don't worry, we'll be back to the podcast in just one second. A while I have you there, I just want to tell you about the Patreon page that we have. Listen, lads, I absolutely fucking love the fact that this lad's thrown me a couple of quid. Like I say, thrown me, really we're throwing it to each other. Because the more more money I get, the more of these fucking things I can guarantee we can make. Patreon, if you haven't heard of it, essentially it's for any art form that you actually really dig in. Somebody's on Patreon, they set up a page, and they really, it's a non-profit scenario anyway. And you want this fucking thing to keep going, whether your man's telling you poetry on a weekly basis, or your man's painting you pictures, or your one's painting you pictures, whichever f- floats your boat. That's what Patreon is for. Throwing them a couple of dollars so that the big fucking media groups don't have to fucking turn around and tell you, no, you're not going to make your stuff. We'll fucking make it just for you, exactly for you, and it can be tailored exactly for you. Like that, lads, have started donating, and I have gotten to the bottom of how I'm going to actually get stuff for the people. There'll be it'll open for what I'm going to do is there's going to be videos of the actual fucking of the real thing and it'll only be open to Patreon patrons essentially what it is each thing a couple of dollars you get in the door don't worry the rest of the stuff will be for free because fuck it that's where we started it'd be class if you could throw throw the podcast not me throw the podcast a couple of quid I'll put the description uh, the link in the description of this for now anyways patreon.com forward slash Tom O'Mahony also I've set up a uh, T Republic, right? I've set up a couple of t-shirts on T Republic. Again, I'll put the link in the description of this. Let me know what you think of them, at least. If they need more, if they need, at the moment it's just a Bugshot logo. Um, there's a new logo coming, but this one is just the text of Bugshot. I'll put it in the OK. I've thrown it up on all the social media platforms, whether it be Snapchat, Twitter, the whole lot, and Instagram. Let me know what you think, more than anything, because I'm not going to go get a fucking lash of them fucking printed. For now, I'll just sell a few of them through T Republic, who pretty much take all the fucking commission, but at least it'll give me a taster and see what people are into. Anyway, for now, go back to the podcast. Was that the party scene? Yeah, that was my fa- from my favourite scene. Oh my god, game. such a good scene. Because it was like, it was good crack, and it was also it was a high point because it was the lads first met. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And even watching it, I got butterflies. Yeah. It was the only thing I ever watched, because I don't watch myself at all. Yeah, man. No matter what, I don't. It's damn near impossible. I don't watch yourself. I still to this day talk about the first time I saw myself and what a gammy walk I had. <laughs> I have the gammiest walk. I thought I had a cool walk, and I walked in. I remember the very first scene I walked. I was kind of walking. I went, "Oh, for 
fucks. <laughs> well, you're not you're, you're not worst critic there. I mean, you're gonna point. Oh, well, absolutely. Like, you know I mean, like, I can't believe, I can't believe. Like, but I, I'm a pure culty walk. That's what I have. <laughs> Even though it's like the accent and I'm. I know it's stroll going there now. Here, total D four. But I walk into the thing and it's like, ah, oh, Tommy may be wearing well. Easy cuts. <laughs> Look at the head in you. For fuck's sake. Ah oh, man. But yeah, that that scene. I remember the bit before that scene where Demo comes through the fucking window. That took about fucking twenty goes, like, cause they're laughing, they're laughing, cause I was just, cause and it was, yeah. I, I, and it was, in fairness, it wasn't my fault. Andy kept on fucking laughing. It's like, just, it's physics big. defied the fact that he, the window that he was actually halfway through. There's no human <laughs> yeah. on this planet could have come through it, <laughs> yeah. but it was just enough to go in. You always trying to get out. Yeah, yeah. Hold on, he just manages to get through. <laughs> he gets stuck. <laughs> <coughs> and then that was good crack shit on that gaff. It was good crack until the segue got taken away from us, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that, Luke. Speaking of Alex's. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, what was it? Yes, you were, you were shooting scenes upstairs. You might have to be like off camera on the phone and you could just see my little head going by the window. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, know, like, you, you said something and I just captured him all. He's like, he's the most, uh, like the richest, loneliest kid in the world. Like, yeah. Segway <laughs> going around his car. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you do, dude. But this is the thing, in one of the scenes, for anybody who's never seen Table One Ivor, in one of the scenes... And it's only for one scene, or what? I, like it was to be like uh, uh, that Tom Cruise scene where he where he flies through the house and stuff. But he's on a he flies into the parents in the dining room on a Segway, yeah. I, Iverless. But the bloke who owns the Segways, he has a whole touring company of Segways around the Phoenix Park, and he brought like two of them. And most of the time, <laughs> they were just sitting on set doing nothing. And this is quite a big yard around that house. And he did. It was- he did tell us how to get on them. He did tell us how to ride them. Like. And he did allow us to ride them while he was there. And did we ride those fucking things? Oh, it was like Mario Kart. Oh my God. <laughs> how we didn't kill ourselves. Well, it wasn't a perfect loop. You had to get down to the like, little conservatory, you know, where like, yeah. the school was. And you had to like, oh, you master that, spin around and come back. It was like a, like a horseshoe we could do. So at the end, you had to like slow and spin. And how did around. nobody come out and go, lad, stop fucking doing that? Because they're quiet. And not like, more than filming on them areas. <laughs> do you remember? I went on autopilot and I just started daydreaming. Oh, and Jesus, people came in. And I remember, I actually remember it because we were there. Um, they, uh, being big in the video games that I am, I follow stuff on Twitter. And right. Rockstar just released the, these pictures of what would be the GTA 5 protagonists. Right. It's the first thing they've ever like, said. And I was like, oh shit, there's three of them. Oh, this is that. And I'm on the segue thinking, oh, what's going to be like? What's going to be like? <laughs> well, dry. Um, Hence why... And I nearly went through the fucking glass. No, the swimming pool yeah, is. Yeah. I nearly... I went... I had to pull back, jump off the segue, and stop the fucking thing. I nearly went through the fucking glass. Oh my glass. good Jesus Christ. And, oh shit, I nearly killed myself. I nearly caused damage. I was like, wait, pay attention. But that wasn't spotted. What was spotted was me hitting the gate at about 50 miles an hour. <laughs> oh. It's the reason why the segue is <laughs> taken off. Man, I hit that fucking gate hard, didn't I? Oh, we had hours left as well. I was sitting there. Oh, we did, yeah. I wasn't even allowed sunbed. I couldn't do that. I got given a shite there because I was out in the sun too long and I went brown. Did you? Yeah, I had to get white makeup. I had to get... Oh, that's Because I was really pale. And then I was out in the sun chatting and I went back in and I was like, where'd you get that tan? <laughs> <laughs> I had to get this like, kind of like pale my skin up because I was like, no, no. I was like, yeah, that's hilarious. That again. I was like, sorry. So any, there's, there's might be pictures on set where you, we're, all, we're all chilling at the Halloween episode mm. and you're, all in your, you're on your gear yourself and uh, Tasha are outside. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think there's this picture of me besides me top over my face, like a big oversized turban on your head. <laughs> your body, you know, not like, Can't get your face tanned. your face <laughs> tanned, yeah. Jesus Christ, I didn't think you tanned that quickly. Like. I, I tan in the shade. Do you? I, oh yeah, this, the last four weeks have been hell for me. I, I have been getting abuse off that sun. I tan in the shade. I born in the shade. I, Jesus Christ. I've been, I've been in bits. I put up on Twitter going, lads, I missed the rain. <laughs> and uh, Eric Lauren asked me to be going delete this account immediately <laughs> I'm born in here man I'm not built for this shit <laughs> to be fair most Irish people are bullshit and nobody's built for that shit oh not at all man no white people are built for fucking 33 degrees like you're not no. you're just not you can tolerate it on holidays because you're jumping in and out of the pool and staying under sh- a shade and you're not doing it but when you're walking around outside and you, all of a sudden you feel the tops of your ears sizzling like <laughs> I found a frazzled frog in the lawn the other day like a frog that had actually dried mid jump <laughs> Well, that's that's enough to tell you that nobody, no white people should be out in this sun. Ah, oh, oh. season two then was a bit of crack as well. Like I was, we didn't. I don't think we got any crossover. Although I was, I was in, I was the yeah, because I was definitely going to be evil in season two. Like. Season two was different. Yeah, season two was um, oh, we but we kind of like instead of like trying to find each other was the main story. It was like the lads had their own separate stories. Yes, yeah, yeah. 
And uh, yeah, that was all like. See, it's all a blur to me, man. All I can remember is I got married. Yes. I got married and I got put in a dress. That's all I remember. I got put. I got put in a, a ballerina outfit. And the day we were out shooting that, I came down with the worst like twenty four hour bug of all time. You're allergic to being. You're that okay. transphobic. Yeah. You're that transphobic. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I just remember I started sweating. I was like getting sick. I was like. You know what? I'm sweating. Wow. It was like, got the shape of the scene. Everybody's having the crack. <laughs> just me, green, just going, get this dress off me. It's, see- it's seeping my powers. Lost the producer now and then. We went, like, I t- can't thank her enough. She went, we've moved the scenes. We'll go home and rest. That's all yeah. I needed was just a rest. Just whatever it was came on to me. Just of sleep. I was, I was sleeping bad at the time. Just yeah. Because um, I was in an attic room. Uh, we had a bit of a heat wave then as well. Oh, and I was just boiling and sweating and getting three hours sleep and because I can't be forced sleep. to eat crisps throughout the entire <laughs> fucking day of scenes. And uh, all I needed was the day, and that was the next day. I mean, I'm I'm, I'm walking up and down the road, and up and down Bray's and the rest going, "What's the story?" Conor McGregor walking. Conor McGregor was great. I had the swag. Up. That's going. That's I own the way. Claim people are good now. I'll do whatever you want me to do. <laughs> And then the movie came around then. How was it making a movie? That's that was, class. My first movie, before first time ever doing something like that. And it was, it was, it was big. It was like, wow, we're doing this. Like, this is like, holy shit. Pardon me, couldn't believe it. And um, yeah, we had a, we shot it in, shot it in four weeks. Really tight, really on thing. And it was different. We had um, like a new crew. We had a new, it wasn't something we had. Very few people came back over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I was one of them. <laughs> <laughs> I was busy with other things, you know. I mean, true. But like a new crew, and it was like it was an, it was a new start. It was a film, but it was yeah. also a new beginning because it had a new new people to get like yeah, yeah. To meet and greet and all that. So they carry over from season two, where it was like, oh, the ga- the gang's back together. It was like, whoa, it's a new gang now. Let's. But it was really different. It was a different flow of pace. Um. Was it early morning, late nights kind of thing? Yeah, yeah. like them starting, finishing again. Um, some original location were back to like Grano's house and yeah. stuff like that. And um, we had one day, and I remember this day for the rest of my acting career, we had one scene for one day. Jesus. And you know yourself from filming them scenes with just two lads. It was the first scene with the three lads for the very first time. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in that scene, um, won't be spoiling. Like, won't go into spoilers for people who haven't seen it yet. Not that you can go and see it now. We have to wait till it comes out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but. Uh, like and, like if, if saying it from an actor, and he tackles himself. Like Damo takes down John Joe to the ground. Really? And before that, John Joe loafs over, and it's like, oh my god! Reading on scripts, like, oh, this is gonna be deadly. And you get down to it, and the things being like, holy shit, this is gonna be long. And yeah. it was long, and it was tired, and everybody, especially Andy, it was a long day for him, because you know how he has to go through the different like, yeah, physically has to change, and he mentally has to yeah. change, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he has this tour persona to bring on, and um. I don't know if you've seen it, but uh, have you have you seen the film? No. John Joe was very hoarse. Yeah. And he's like, like, he, and I was like, wow, like I don't know how you did it. Like it's, <laughs> it is like. And who was he tackling then? Who was the stunt double that just looked happened? a bit like him? Um, do you remember Gav? Who played the double? Yes. Gav got brought back. He played the day. He so we got, we had Gav on the days. It was just two of them. Gav played the other one. Right. He played the Damo or whatever. And then we brought three in. We had him. Um, we had we was guys, yeah. Andy was there, whatever, as whoever he was. Yeah. And then you look over and there's three there's a demo over and John Joe. Not it's not Andy, and yeah, yeah. three lads just like take in like, it's like just you're playing, like playing with yeah, toys, yeah. you're taking the fake one out and putting the real one in and it was like surreal like Brilliant. And like I said I don't watch stuff but I I seen that. Like I got the premiere and then I took oh, yeah, yeah. my mammy to go see it and then I went with the lads who wanted to go see it. The only time I'll ever go see myself is just because they wanted to go. It's like, horrible, isn't it? Hey, like, especially on like, like, I won't ruin it for you, but it's in the trailer. I, I, I get pissed on in the film. Like, oh, yes, yeah, yeah. James, <laughs> I or Graham Singleton pits, pisses on you. Oh, Damo he? does, but Graham goes, I'll take a show you on him. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, it's big laughs, but I'm looking at myself going, oh, my God, no. Because I'm very self conscious about my body, and I'm like, I'm just, I'm in a pair of shorts, and I'm like, quality. Oh, no. But, um, oh, I'm not losing train of thought. Um, Getting pissed on can do that to you. Yeah, big style. But yeah, it was it was very different. It was very long days, but we got there. And a testament, Andy, as well, from going through, like... I always I always say to him, you're some man for two men. But now I have to change, you're some man for three men. Three men, yeah. He's some man for his... He's, he, 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 I wouldn't be surprised now he has a whole nine of them ready to rock and roll. It's kind of like... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The clumps. Yeah, that's like, the, yeah, yeah, I was like, what's yeah, in yeah. that family? Because he can do it. 
But um, yeah, long day is very um, but the crack was still there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we done the usual thing like we done with season two. Halfway through, we went, "Let's go, everyone. Let's go have a pint." Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, way. you need. Yeah, Jesus Christ, it's a long haul. Like people don't fully understand, and even if you're doing nothing on set, and we're talking about do- dicking about with like segues and stuff like that, you're you don't relax because at any point and go, hey, hey, Tom, Louis, we need you. And oh. you have to be ready to fucking rock because there's money on the line. Like every time they turn on the camera, yeah. money is just flying out of the fucking door. And smoke like, back down. They're like, oh, full cigarette gone. Full yeah. cigarettes. <laughs> Our rock stars. Our rock stars. <laughs> Grand. We're in the middle of now. We got no cigarettes. A lot of bumming. I'll be trying. I know. Yeah. Have you got one? Have you got one? <laughs> and then, then was there any any talks of going back to Fair City or anything after that? I did that? go back. You I did. Went, Sorry. Yeah, back, yeah. Yeah. I went back um, two years ago. I went back. Right. I was in the middle of doing my drama facilitation for us. I yeah. Said, I went back and got the qualification. Uh, for the year, I was doing what's called, what's called Arts Train, which is a course run with uh, Youth Theatre Ireland, where we train 15 people over the year and how to become a drama student there. Right. And focusing on doing workshops with young people or adults. And where did you do that then? In the lab on Foley Street. Yes. So 10 o'clock start and then till 4 o'clock. It was a, it was a course that was done. It was running alongside uh, the CD, ETD, whatever FOSS is now. I can't, it's, a, it's a load of letters. Yeah. But um, yeah, so the course I did that, it was great. one of the best years of my life, hands down. I'm not even exaggerating. I met right. some fantastic people. And I had, like, me as a person, myself, I opened up. I used to be very shy and introvert, even in my mid 20s. A couple was, of animals in red inside you, though, you were a different <laughs> fucking animal. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, but uh, even going to the shop and getting a pack of cigarettes, I'd look to the left, I'd the right, I'd look down. I'd never look at the shop people in the eye. Right. And for one month, there was in this course, one of the modules was on leadership and how I'm being a leader and leading um, a workshop full of people. And I was shitting myself. I was like, I'm not going to be able to do That's this. why I wanted you to do stand-up back then. Because like. oh, I, I knew it would break It would break all that shit down it's very quickly. It's still in my head. I was still thinking about it the other time. I still put the odd line down. But then I was just, I was just throwing it on Facebook. Yeah. It's out there now. Like, yeah, half yeah. the shit I think for stand-up, it's online. And like, well, people have seen it now. But, but not yeah. everybody's seen it. You can still do it. I might go back. I go, I go through my Facebook memories and go, I remember that, yeah. Oh, that's a good one. I remember that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I remember that, yeah. But um, I've done the leadership module, and by the end of it, it was changed. I can, like, I'm looking at you now and talking to you. I wouldn't be able to do this now, even though we're friends. Yeah. I couldn't look in the eye and talk to you like this. What really stood out to me, I went to the shop and I got a pack of cigarettes and I looked the shopkeeper in the eye. I went, oh, you can get this. I was like, holy shit, I'm doing this right now. Mm. Wow. And it really opened me up as a person and how to just approach everything and just, I changed as a person. It really helped me just, yeah. just become who I am a lot more. So halfway through that, we were, um, we were doing the course, and uh, there's this thing that comes up every year called the uh, Kilkenny Youth Theatre Festival. The Youth Theatre Festival, I can't remember the word, but it's in Kilkenny on College. Right. On the campus, and I think 10 youth theatres from all around Ireland come together. Yeah. And they all get split up into five groups, and you work with um, like a mask of a certain thing, of a certain like, type of theatre, and for the week you do workshops all day, and there's activities at night and a show, and at the end, on the Sunday, they put together a big performance, like yeah. one after one. And I went down to that, and I was doing that. And I had to leave on the weekend because I got called to go back to Fair City. I was like, "Whoa, right!" Five years later, I get this email. I got the email back in I think March, I think it was. And right. I just got my phone beeped, and I took it out of my pocket, and I went, "I was just, I was staring at my phone." And my girlfriend going, "Yeah, right. What's wrong?" Like, I was like, just looking up, and I was like, "Look at this. Look at." It was speech. Couldn't believe it. Yeah. And it was. An, it was an absolute availability check saying, "Will you be available come July?" I rang. I rang Wes. Straight away, I went, Is this a real person? I thought I was being trolled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was yeah, like, yeah. It's been five years. It's really like, Am I coming back? I rang, I was like, Is this a real person? P- please think, Is this a person? I was like, Yeah, that's a real person. I was like, Ring, ring, ring it back, ring it back. I was like, What's going on? I hung up on him. <laughs> like, wrote back the email and then couldn't believe it and went back. And it was good crack because I left when I was 21 and I was really shy back then as well, as I said. Yeah, yeah. So I didn't really have, like, I had the crack of some lads there. So were you coming back from Spain? I was coming back from Spain. I came back in a boot of a car dressed as Batman. <laughs> Because yeah. Denzel was the dense one, like he's he's known as like he's not he's not all he always he's the Rodney of the of the he thinks he always thinks he's trying to do best right like, that's how we got coiled up into the whole mortar he was in the room when um when Barty uh, accidentally murdered um Sarah she was he was trying to stop her leaving and she fell and right. her head but Denzel was in the other room trying to get a hoodie back because we were in that gaff giving him grief the week before I was like I'll go get your hoodie back I'll go in the like, it was the brother's hoodie I'll go get it. And but I'll, I'll help you. I'll bury the body. Yeah, fuck it. Yeah, and that's how he gets tied up in it. So it's his idea that um, he comes back to Carrickstown in disguise in a trunk. <laughs> <laughs> but it was real good fun to come back. It was a daily photo where um, the photo was in the mirror when they uh, released the news before they came out. It's just me in the kitchen, uh, Batman. <laughs> <laughs> 
And we're holding up a Wonder Woman out before the other fella. And I'm like, what's going on? The lads are back in town. Like, what's going on? <laughs> but it was really good fun to come back and meet the guys again. And just, like, the changes that were there. And it was like I never left. Like, right. Was, like, open arms. And everyone everyone on that set is, is bang on. Like, everyone is so good. It's, it's like a second family being there. And I do remember it was actually good crack. Everybody, there was very little stuck upness. And all I was doing was extra work. And you think that people go, what, what are people like? Like, what are you going to be like? There's actually nothing. I'm not just saying that because I work with these people. There's nothing. These people are down to earth and sound. You have oh, to, yeah. Like, you have to bounce, like, you have to crack, like. Well, we've gotten very lucky in the handful of things we've done, like, because I remember I was on, I played a cop on Ripper Street. And, like, there was a couple of the main lead actors on it, like, they wouldn't fucking look at you, man. Seriously? They wouldn't look at you. Away. Now whether they're trying to keep their head in the space and stuff, but you're like lads, none of no, none of us are saving lives here. Relax your fucking self. <laughs> We're having kind of the crack life. Do you know what I mean? I can't like, remember who it was. Someone was telling me a story that uh, they um, oh, I can't remember who it was. They were on they were on Batman Begins, the Christian Bale. All oh, right. And uh, they were playing one of the ninjas of the um, the Nazgul or yeah, not? Well, uh, not the yeah. Nazgul, obviously. They're the from League of Assassins. That's yes. I mean, yeah. I'm, lo- I'm, lo- I'm losing my gig points here. Yeah, Jesus <laughs> Christ! I thought you'd be all over that. And. Uh, I can't remember who it is. Um, if you're listening to this, I'm very sorry. I forget whose story this is. And I'll just, I'll just remember it because people try to keep their head in the game. Yeah. And the there as ninjas about to do this scene and Christian Bale is in character. <laughs> I'm paraphrasing but he just, I think he said kind of like, cool costumes. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, you know, I'm, hopefully I'm telling it and I'm paraphrasing their story right but I remember hearing and I was like, that's actually fantastic. Like, like, Trying to say like you look deadly, but <laughs> keeping Batman as yeah. going. Hey, nice costume. The only when I was on Ripper Street, who was deadly sound was uh, what was his fucking name? Jesus, and this is he was um, he played Bron. In, oh yeah, I know you're talking about um, Game of Thrones. Yeah, uh, best character Game of Thrones. Don't whack me at that. Best character Game of Thrones. He's either Robson or Jerome, one or the other. <laughs> because he's he's Jerome, isn't he? Jerome, Jer- yeah, Jerome. That's bringing a bell, yeah. Yeah, he is Jerome. But he was, geez, he was in some condition, I remember, as well. We were just chatting. He seemed like a nice enough fella. And also, and coincidentally, who was nice, was the fellow who played Blackfish in Game of Thrones. The big tall man. Do you remember? No. He was, he, he would have been Caitlin that. Stark's uncle. Look at me geeking you out. Oh, I'm out geeking you right uncle, now. Uncle, 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 yeah. yeah, and he told Jamie Lannister to go fuck off. Basically, he wasn't giving him the castle. He was called, and he, he actually wore armor that looked like scales, like black. Oh, Being taught, he's about six six. I tell, so tell you this now, right? Um, here's how crap I am with remembering Game of Thrones. It took until season three to realize that uh, Cersei and fucking um, Jamie were brother and sister. I, I swear, because it, did, it didn't dawn on me. Because I'm just, I'm, I'm kind of phased in and out. So the first episode, we see them fucking going at it. Spoiler alert! If you haven't seen the first episode, and then he's riding his sister. Yeah, and then he pushes like, the kid out the window. Yeah, I was like, oh, it's just the king's guard getting it off with the the king's missus. And in season three, it clicked, and I went, oh, oh no! That... <laughs> I would have loved to be season there. Season three, I would have like, loved to be sitting like, beside you, going, what? <laughs> I'm like twenty five episodes deep into this thing, <laughs> and it clicks. And I'm like, oh fucking god! I would really not know that. Look, me, me mate Wes is everything. He's lore. He is. He watches everything on YouTube. Look, right. If a picture of someone's elbow gets leaked, he watches a two-hour video on that shit. Like, yeah, he I, loves I, it. Like. I can't. Even though I read the books and everything, like, but um, I can't because I know some bollocks has made it. Yeah. Unless it came from Martin or our Martin, then fuck it. And nothing's coming from him. But yeah, not Jesus Christ. You want to get a move on? He's getting fatter, the fucker. Like. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he will croak soon enough. Like he has a little. Cons- he apparently has a contingency plan in place. So he's told the producers and one of their people the end. He goes, "If I go, here's the real end." Here's right. What's gonna happen now? I don't know if that's gonna come through on the show or he's let them do it because they are doing their own thing now, aren't they? And they are they're, totally they're, doing well ahead. All the way off the book now. At this but there's stage. a real funny. Uh, there's a funny picture. It's like it's not as big balls you can get in, roll down the hill with the big bubbles you can get in. Yes. The picture of George R. R. and one of them. I was like George R. 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 Martin pictures. Doing everything he fucking can but writing the next book. I'm just him having the crack out down the hill of the big To be bomb. fair, if you were making that kind of twine, <laughs> yeah. you wouldn't be writing no books. You'd be definitely flying down hills on, on, on Zorbs or whatever they call You absolutely would, like. And you, like, you were talking about, um, <coughs> what, like, and you, like, where was the, fr- was it in Ballymun? What was Ballymun like growing up? Because you hear some lads saying it was tough, but then the lads that I know that came out of Ballymun are... Some of the nicest, more gentle people I've ever met. Like, yeah, Bally One, it's it's changed a lot now. Like, there's a huge change in between the last, well, I'm there now, what, twenty seven years, physically, and like, 
it's a big change. You take a picture of the 1990s and take a picture of 2018. Because they dropped all the big towers. It's yeah. all the towers are gone. The the blocks are gone. The flats are they're all gone. There's yeah. No, yeah, there's nothing left. That's a big change. The roundabout gone. All these new houses are built and all these new walkways are put in. It's all, it's all like so. Like if some if someone were in like prison or away and came back. Yeah. They went in the night in like the nineteen ninety nine came out in two thousand and five. People got, I know somebody was, and he got lost, and he came back, like, I don't know where these fucking house is. Jesus. One, because it was demolished, but two, like, yeah, yeah. you didn't know where the flat used to be, like, it was so changed. Wow. Um, growing up there, I had no trouble growing up. Yeah. I never had any trouble. There's one thing about Bonnie, like, it, if you went looking for it, you'd find it, I suppose. I don't, it, got, it got a bad, like, it gets a bad rap by some people. They were outside Bonnie Moon, I think. You're right, yeah, yeah. Are in there, because one thing about Bonnie Moon is, and I, I have not hard to believe this, there's an amazing sense of community there. You won't get anywhere right. else. Right. You'll, like, that community is nowhere else. Is it a, kind of us against them kind of a thing, you reckon? Oh, everybody knows everybody. Right. Everyone knows everybody. And if they don't know them personally, they know them through someone else. You might never say hello to that person, but you know it's who like they are. It's like a small town, so. It is. But it's, it's a it's, village mentality. It's, it's a big town. It has. The village mentality is such a, like, it is pretty large, like, Valley one. And we have the theatre there now, the access theatre. Yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. And I remember I was asked once, um, what do people think about having a theatre there? It's not very like la di dara fancy dance. Like, no, like, they just pack it every day. Is it? They do lunches, they do everything. Like, mm. and everyone's there. Like, you see, like, um, I think it's around like 12 o'clock. You see all, like, the mounds and the prams and all. It's like a big meetup. It's just, that's just where they go. They have the, the hot It's food. good to keep, it's good if only, if only just to keep theatre familiar in people's minds. Like, huge, do you know that kind of way? It's huge, like, man. Like, you have so much. So much stuff goes in there, like, my uh, sister's part of a show called, uh, a company, I hope I don't get this, if I do, um, throw it in like a comment or something, I think they're called Shreds. Right. And I went to see them two weeks ago, and basically, you watch, go watch Dirty Dancing. Yeah. Never seen Dirty Dancing. Seen the first one ever two weeks ago. What? Yeah. <laughs> How have you sidestepped that fucking movie? Well, it was your favourite film, wasn't it? Oh, it is, actually, yeah. I, I could do the lift and everything if you so, want. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nobody, but, put, um, nobody puts Louis in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember I was saying it, and what happens anytime there's like a dance part, these 30 women come out on stage, not 30, about 20, and eight, ages go from like 25 to um, I think one of them is 70. And it's all in between, and they dance with the movie. And it does it again. It's, yeah, and it's it's oh my god! And beforehand, the people, the woman who uh, who was running it comes out goes, she starts going, give me a on the left side, give me a give me a Sylvia, and the right side, give me a baby, and then the people was like, we want you to clap, we want you to applaud, we want you to sing, That's laugh. A brilliant idea. And all of a sudden, it's like you know, like you go watch the Rocky Horror. Yeah, like, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, put yeah. Newspapers up and square guns and yeah. stuff like that. <clears throat> but it was like, but it was just the crack. First half, people kind of getting into it, like not knowing they like, like. They shout out what time scene. of the day was this at? This was um, 8 o'clock. All right. Half 7, 8 o'clock. So people could have had drinks on board. There was a drink before, but we came come the second half, there was a second drink flow. Oh, there we go. And there it was just, go, the yeah. banter was great. People, there were people chatting in between, like, just slowly mumbling, but they were still paying attention when they I came get you, stage. yeah, yeah. Just amazing. Like, a little scene where, it, um, it might not be out, and it might be just, like, a song playing as just, like, whatever's going on in the film. Yeah. But they'll come out and do, like, a little dance. So there's, like, a hula song playing. And they all came out and hula scares for like 30 seconds and then, hey, and then walk back off. And it's just little tippets in between. That's just amazing. And then towards the end, it was just great crack. They had a lad on as well, like in the Swayze gear. Stop. And he was on the ho- it was just, it was great crack. Like, yeah. I was buzzing on, this is actually deadly. Like, yeah, yeah, People yeah. making jokes in between. Like, <laughs> your dad made a few people laugh. <laughs> it was in. There was a line where the baby goes, the uh, Swayze guy goes, do you want to hear something crazy? And my dad just goes, but it was a full house that theatre holds I think almost 200 people and uh, go see Dirty Dance and go support these women dancing if if you've never seen something like it before go see it I think they've done Chicago before and they've right. done other films and it's just fantastic crack like 20 women on stage like it's an all female group yeah 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 Huge, uh, the whole spectrum of age. That's a great kind of introduction to theatre. Do you know what I mean? If you weren't ready to go, I don't know, kind of sit through an entire fucking movie. This is just mad. You're watching a movie and they're... And you put a break in the middle as well. Ah, oh, brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Have, yeah. We'll have a slash, get our point, bring it in. That's the thing, you see. If you can get people liquored up at all for their new first time, yeah. you know, like coming to watch we call it, because... I've heard of them, like they do it in the Sugar Club a fair bit, which is a perfect yeah. setting because it's got rounded seats and stuff. But that's brilliant that they actually have it in a regular theatre. Oh, it's fantastic, you know? yeah. And that theatre's fantastic. Like, 
It's, I love that theatre. It's where he started. I did right. the very first show in that theatre when I was 14. My debut was called Debut. <laughs> Believe it or not. Because <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of new members. So that's called a debut. There were a lot of new members and a lot of people wrote for me for the very first time. Right. So it was like eight little short plays. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wrote by the members and directed by the director. And it was just, it was fantastic. But um, it's great. And upstairs was the art gallery and the axes and all. There's just so much there. It's fun. like brilliant. Like That's brilliant for just the community alone. Like. That's, that's that's class to hear. Like, because mm. you, and I could never wrap my head around it because people, you know, it would just have a name. It's like, well, who's creating the fucking name? Like, mm. And because anybody I've met, it's not that I live in some sort of special world where only lovely <laughs> people show up. Trust me, I'm, because it's like, like this is the thing like there's plenty of rough towns around the country yeah. like you know so it's it's brilliant to hear it that it isn't as per what he, but I th- you know I mean how rough is rough like yeah like you know? it's not like just like there's not there's not gangs around the area like yeah, you know what yeah, I mean yeah. like there's no like drive by not kind of where you see like Americanized like um like media kind of thing like like I was watching that uh. So and love hate sold an awful lot of horse shit to people like as yeah, if you it's could, not like that at all. Like, even though it was in the towers it wasn't like that at all but like were you in, did you live in, in the towers early on I lived in one of the I lived in one of the tower blocks yeah I lived in um, it was, it was, I lived in Amy Kent each tower was named after um, one of the, Jam- Amy Kent James Connolly right um, Plunkett McDermott and quite a re- Republican vibe there is it? <laughs> I remember we, I remember we, um, she painted well I'm guessing in the <laughs> <laughs> I remember we went to a uh, Clement in jail years ago with the youth theatre, and like there was many things named after these men. There's this and that, and you left it at that. And, we, and all the guys in the group, we went. There was a bally one. Everyone else we just looked around at us. They went, name them motherfuckers. You know what I mean? They were big. Yeah. Not in size, but they were like well known. Like, but um, yeah, we li- I lived in Amy Kent, and um, that was like there was a seven towers. Each one was like fifteen stories high. There was ninety six houses in each one. I could be wrong. Like it's been Jesus, right? Halloween was great. It was so easy, trick or treating, because you just went diddling, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> diddling. God, that's efficient when you think about it, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Bad people trick or treating there, you can go down roads and You deals. can just shout down the corridor, actually. I'm knocking on all your doors right now. So. <laughs> think about it, there'd be so many kids going on, so the doors are open, and you look around, like, right, fucking cross the White House kids, I might as well get the next fucking suite. I just wait the door to open and just give fucking so many kids with black bags wrapped around their neck, pretending yeah. directly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> They don't. Kids nowadays don't know the joy of having, or the shame of having yeah. a plastic bag as your fucking Dracula outfit, like plastic bag, and then we know that bag for your sweets. Yeah, like we had black bags for our sweets because we had so many hills to hit. <laughs> if you want to take the risk and go over to another block and go on, I tell you, go on talk, another tour flight. They, they talk about hard places to grow up. Try grow up, up growing up on a country fucking road where there aren't <laughs> any houses. <laughs> huh? Try getting trick or treating some bastard two miles away. Is always the worst. <laughs> <laughs> and if you one shot at one house, maybe that was it. <laughs> And if he didn't have sweets, you get an apple or some fucking thing. Oh, I just hate apples. Or monkey nuts. I hate nuts. Arrow, fuck off your monkey nuts. He's like, I don't eat nuts. You can't even say that. Like, I remember one day we knocked on a gaff and uh, it was one of the older lads. Because like, there was the younger lads and there was the older lads. And right. Then, like, the younger lads would annoy the older lads and like, you get a slap or you run away get the chase kind of thing. Yeah, like, yeah. I remember he knocked the door and he seen it. was just like, oh yeah. And he fucking put the freshers and the fucking damn bars away and went in and got the, fucking, the Granny Smith and just like <laughs> free throwed him into the bag. He's like, fuck you, get. <laughs> fucking apples like yeah. what kind of kid wants an apple uh, you knew what he was doing he's like fellas like 70 and acting the bollocks so he's like oh yeah you know me now are you yeah. fuck you you're not getting days you're rotten bollocks and you still li- are you living out in Ballymun still there now yeah like I've only moved out of Ballymun once I moved to Kells when I was 18 what yeah I moved to Kells how did you end up in Countryville we had, like? we had a fresh 18 we were fresh faced and we wanted to move out like, we're 18 let's move out yeah and uh, my mate said oh yeah have a gap we can go there like mm. And three months moved down for three months. And around that time, the film The Secret of Kells came out. And we were like, you know what The Secret of Kells is? It's fucking cold. I was going to bed in tracksuits and jeans and double wraps. I could see me breath in my bedroom. It was like, an old house, was it? It was an old house. And we had, none of us had jobs. Like, none of us had money. Like, we weren't even on the scratch. We were just living there for three months. But the way I'm getting money off my fucking parents. Just glued to the PlayStation. Not, like, four stations. Playing games non-stop. Going to bed at six, waking up at six. Like, so kind of like the Gwail Talk without the Irish. Oh, just <laughs> kind of like squatting. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Squatting with rights, basically. But um, oh, I was mad. Yeah, I lived there and moved out. Said in Ballymore since. I literally, I've like pinged around like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Five minutes away from the old house, now ten minutes away from the old house. That's it. And gaming, gaming is big for you, isn't it? I knew that from the get-go, Huge. like, you know what I mean? Grew up gaming. Grew up with a pad in my hand. 
You know, I wasn't plugged in. I grew up with that pad in Just the hand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> had a Commodore growing up. Had you Nintendo. even had the belt buckle, didn't you? Oh, me and Nintendo, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the home. first time I've ever seen one of them. And I still, it's burned in my memory going, that's a smart, that's a smart that, thing. That thing is a weapon. I probably wouldn't let it bring that thing on a, onto an airplane. It's dangerous. Yeah, have it at home. I have, to, I have a Sonic one as well, which I'm not that proud of. A spin, because Sonic's not that good anymore. <laughs> Sonic, when you spin it around, it looks like Sonic doing a spin. Right. Yeah, a game was a big thing. Like, I grew up game, and I love gaming. I, rem- I still remember playing Zelda on the Super Nintendo and saving the princess for the very first time. Right. Uh, and jumped up or down. I was like, Mammy, Mammy, where's Daddy? I want to tell him I'm yeah, the yeah. princess. He didn't work. I want to ring him. I didn't fucking ring him about work. <laughs> like, Can you imagine telling the outlet? And I just sat there. I was like, I don't want to. I, I want him to believe me that I did this. So yeah, I, didn't, yeah. I didn't play the game for like two hours. Then I got bored and I played. Like, you'll have to believe me. Not knowing the game will save and he'll yeah, say yeah. my name when the four hearts mean that he did it. And yeah, I grew up doing it. We had a PlayStation, a PS2. I still have it at home. I still have my Super Nintendo set up at home. Then right. Sitting around under the TV. I think 18 games might have survived. Do you have the gun? No, I no, we'll have the gun now. That's, um, that's the hell. The orange gun? That thing yes, yeah, yeah. Duck hunt. Yeah, I haven't got that anymore. But I wouldn't work on a TV now. You need an old CRT TV. All you know right. Because flat screens don't have the same uh, tube. Yeah, it needs to be a tube TV. Yeah. Otherwise, it won't pick up. Because when you pull that trigger, what happens is... So you tell me tube TVs could actually make... You could probably sell them as retro yokes nowadays for You people. find a game collector who hasn't got one. who's looking at a collection. They'll buy that off. You'll sell the old TV. Are you fucking joking? I swear to God, yeah. Because it won't, won't work on a flat screen. It won't work on an LCD TV. Jesus Christ! It won't work. You lay them at the TV and it'll go like miles off this way. It's right, that's, that's what I'm on the hunt for now. It's <laughs> old tellies. Get a free one on that version. You can flog it off at 20 quid maybe. If you find someone who hasn't got one yet. If they haven't thought the same way. And that's what I marketed with. Can't play Duck Hunt, can you? Yeah, exactly. You can't play Time Crisis. If we, you yeah, Time Crisis was the other one. I, <laughs> I had a, at one stage. I had a had a fucking bazooka. Sure. For a Super Nintendo, was it? Yeah. The Super Scope, big huge. I had yeah. yeah Super Scope Six. Yeah, that's the game that you got with it. What the fuck was that? And I don't know how I grew out of. I think I'm guessing just fucking driving tractors probably got in the way and actually shooting real guns. <laughs> <laughs> I remember she really going to text you. You won't believe me. Proud of me. Yeah. Like, I was the only person to get all the, the clay pigeons. <laughs> it's, uh, well, yeah, I, I, I tell you one thing. It's only a word that I know and very little about, but I've been more and more looking into because it, when you hear kids now go, nowadays going, yeah, I'm, you can make money. Yeah, big style. And you're like, but, but you're competing. I don't know. People watch me after I've recorded me play. Yeah. Oh, I love it. I love watching it. I don't, Do it's, you? It's, it's, like, it's like this, like a podcast. I'll put it on and I'll just listen to it and I'll fall asleep. If it's something that I know to death and I know the game inside out, I won't have to watch it because I know what's happening kind of way. And I'll just like listen to how he's That's doing. That's amazing. And sometimes like, sometimes and is there a commentary over it that, that you enjoy or is it just whether it's say it's fucking Assassin's Creed or something? It's a mixture of both. Right. If someone is doing a dog's dinner of the game, I'll get really pissed off at it. And right. a lot of people will get pissed off at it if they're not playing the game right. And you'll see, go down to them comments and like, oh, I can't believe this. And like, just don't watch it. I it's know, phenomenal. I know you want to watch these people play this game because you enjoy their commentary and their personality. Right. But just some people like it's, I hate it as well, like oh, I'm not playing it right, and I hate the fact that I hate this. <laughs> but it's just that it's like someone's insulting the hell they're playing. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. There's yeah. like there's games where like they'll come to a point. Like, oh, here we go. Let's see what happens when we get to this like the big reveal. Yeah. And some people are like, eh. and some people are like, whoa. You're like, that's how I felt. No, no way. You're breaking a body glass and all that. Have you ever seen the you know the woolshed over in Cable Street? Yeah. They have they have big computer game games on like a clo- a screen the size of a gable end of a house, and oh. they yeah they ha- and they've had competitions there. Yeah, Esports type things. Eh? It must be. I know. I and possibly they're all Asian because those lads are quite good. It's yes, in Korea pretty big. Well, in, they have the market. Pretty big in Asia. <laughs> I remember being in GameStop years ago in the down the Omni, and just sometimes they ran me. Oh, we're gonna have a little competition. I'm in a goodie bag. And right, like eight people. Like all the kids. Like couldn't I play? I think it was Tekken. I was oh like, yeah, 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 that's where the force around and the Korean lag was. I was like, "Fuck!" <laughs> <laughs> that's, it's, it, that's not like <laughs> say, that's not a racial thing. It's just them boys know the combinations. They can yeah. do the the left up, the down right, the spin around, the spin around. Like if you're a fan of Street Fighter, these lads can do the Zangief pile driver with the spin, spin. I don't know what it is, but I can't do it. Yeah. But they they do it in their sleep. I'm like, well, you might as well not play. That's I got. I, I, I didn't get a hit in. I didn't get a fucking hit in. Two fucking uh, perfects against me. Do you know what? That's funny, like you say, Zangief. When stuff, like I haven't played games in years, but stuff does come back to you. You're like, oh yeah, I totally loved those characters back then. Yeah. Mortal Kombat was my thing. Yeah, I was yeah. very, I was quite good at Mortal Kombat on the arcades. But I remember I was doing a gig. I, can't, I think it was in Galway or whatever. And I was just talking with 
and there were a group from a uh, computer tech company or right. software and they were all sitting at one table and they were very quiet people they, did, they definitely weren't outwardly laughing while 90% of the room were having a really yeah. good time they were sitting there enjoying it inside their head which I understand <laughs> sometimes people are quite shy until I went I said something 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 chatting away and this like this one one of the lads was really big and like he was, he looked he was just built really big I'd say he'd never saw inside the door of a gym or any sports which is a shame because he was built for fucking rugby this yeah. guy right <laughs> but he had a his beard looked good and so I don't know, something just came from my 12 year old brain I went anyway Zangief like I was saying and you're, <laughs> I thought he was going to fucking burst with excitement <laughs> well, he fucking and they're all looking at each other and said I've been like it's up to say I've been saying this for years I look like a Russian video game fucking character <laughs> And he, you're like, you, like he wouldn't have bent his way out of a wet paper bag. God bless yeah. him. Like just because I was chatting with him afterwards, and he genuinely went, "I almost fucking shit to bed when you called me Zangief because I've been wanting people to call me that for years." And now a whole room you called Zangief. He t- he totally looked like him too. Yeah. I, well, okay, at a broad stretch, yeah. like I'm pretty sure if he took the shirt off, he would not look like Zangief. Call a blanket instead. Yeah, <laughs> more like what was. What was the, the, the sumo lad? That's the Honda. The Honda, yeah. Closer to that. Er, but er, er. He did have that. But like that, it was only then it was like, oh, you're a man in your 30s. And you're totally still clued into it. And it was only from chat. Like, that was just one other time. But it is a thing that has passed me by something for years. But I never realised to where it's gone to. Like, you're saying that to me, where people will go, you're fucking watching it like you're watching telly. Mm. Like, you're watching it like you're watching any kind of sport. Like, yeah. Which is just something totally... Not alien to me because I, I I have played it and I've now you know I have friends who are into it, but it's just something that I had no clue about. It. People getting million dollar pots for the end of competitions, like unbelievable, huge, huge things, like. But it, just even for having a YouTube channel, yeah, lads are making money from people just watching their stuff. I'm very saturated now. A lot of people are in to get that following. Of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's when you find them gems that have a, like fifty k or hundred k, and you say, oh, they're only doing this because they love doing this, <clears throat> and you follow them. Like there's some I found, and he was, um, I think it was. A uh, quarter of a million subs. Right. Now he's uh he's nearly breaking eight hundred thousand subs, and uh, you can just, you just I want this join. I listen to him every night. Well, I can't go to sleep without putting this fella's video on. Really. And he puts one out a day of this game, and uh, it's just I follow a subreddit. It's God, why did you start this back in like? I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to look in and to get on probably talking about it like listening to Farmer here like yeah, yeah. I said. But, uh, but that's yeah. what I was getting around to that you need to get onto this podcast thing. Anybody listening who's into gaming, just hit me up. Because, well, they don't even have to because they, they will find you anyway, regardless. Like. Yeah, I'm on, like, you find me on the medias and all that. But, and, uh, but uh, yeah, like, games, like, because I want to go into that and talk about it because, um, like, I'm a parent now. Like, I'm, I've become a father in the last yeah. months. Gaming has, like, I've hit a brick wall now. I don't have the time anymore. And when I realise that, it's, I'm not sad Can't about it. I wait for him to grow up fast enough so you can actually play games it's with him. That. That. I have this every two or three nights, I get an hour. Yeah. And I enjoy that hour. I don't. I don't go as much. I don't go online as much anymore. I just enjoy my single player. I enjoy, and that's it now. And I don't mind. I agree. It's not like because what like I went twenty six years non stop. It was my hobby. It was my, yeah, yeah. It was my get out. It was my release. Um, sometimes waking up if I had nothing to do that day, I'd wake up and I'd play until the next day, and I would love it. Can find I get bored now, and I'm like I just want to have them two hours, and I'm happy. Right. But I still love. I have a passion for it, and I love to talk about it. And why I'm not might not be an industry insider and know all the latest news. I'll, I'll have like third hand news from websites that anybody else can break the story on. I'm not like a journalist, but I was just talk about it, shoot the shit with someone, shoot the shit with yourself, and go. But the more you, the more you would do something like this, you are becoming kind of a journalist. Like if you do that, that you, I, I fuck me if I say I have some cheat calling myself a journalist, but you are in a media for output, yeah. and you will find people will talk and leak your stuff. You'll find people go that are digging it to go. Hey, did you look at this? And yeah. then. They will have said it to you as a one one on one, but then you can put it to your thousands of listeners. Then, so you are kind of you will end up breaking stuff. Even like. the room, yeah, yeah, yeah. Even for a bit of crack, like this. Let's Throw in some line, lights. <laughs> yeah, Throw in, <laughs> start a rumor mill, like. <laughs> Just why not, like? Well, yeah, it's 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 taking a bit of a back foot on her now. Your girlfriend plays more than you. Really? Yeah, yeah. She's strung out on fire crying now at the moment. She's <laughs> she's ahead of me. Like, I, that's, like, that's I, hilarious. That I, you... I got Tomb Raider. The, the, the revamp and she completely before me what will happen if the young fella doesn't like computer games doesn't like computer games doesn't like computer <laughs> games it's, it's sad it'll happen I'll miss him well thank you nah I'm only messing <laughs> not at all best of work best of luck in the hard hit tough world game 
little Ill knapsack knowledge. over his back looking <laughs> over his shoulder and you're going you just disappointed us that's all <laughs> we're not mad but you're going to have to make it on your own if you play games you know you have a one up but you don't know how to use it <laughs> no if it happens it happens you know what I mean I'll just I don't know I'll, I'll, I'll hopefully I'll Hopefully he likes him that I'm able to get in touch with because I don't know oh, sports, don't follow me in that. I have yeah. my brother. My brother's going to do it. I was like, when he's older, I'll teach him football. Yeah, I mean, your brother's like, mad for sports. Like, yeah, you yeah. do that. Oh, yeah, he's, he broke his collarbone like the same place twice. <laughs> like, he's just, oh, I was like, what's your break there in? Was it God? Was it football? Was it, I was like, no, it was God this time. <laughs> what's the worst injury you get playing a computer game? Carpet tunnel? Yeah, probably, yeah. Like, get that, like, cramp. Do you get cramps in your yeah, hands? Yeah, because we have, have, like, people have different ways of playing games. There's, there's the claw mechanic, which is, like, you have your few fingers up here. Yeah, okay. It's, instead of, like, switching like that. We have, like, I don't know, it's like a bastardized version of that where, uh, like, if I'm, if I'm holding a pad like this. For the people at home, it's a, it's, a, it's a PlayStation controller. So, you have your thumbs on the sticks. Yeah. And a lot of people will move their right thumb and press triangle, square, circular, yeah. X. But I'll bring my finger Index down. Finger. And I'll just do that. To brush across the top of it. Yeah, and I'll just press them like that, and I'm using these, and I have... So when I only put the pad down, my finger's like this, and I'm like, ah! And it's just tired, or I had to run it under a tap going, that's enough for today, that's enough yep. for today. Yeah, yeah, I'm actually fucking... Free. My hands are actually fucking crabbing <laughs> up at it. <laughs> that's how you come down the car, but I'm not giving yourself a rest on. Look, look, I have these now, I'm wearing glasses now, these are for... Yeah, TV. I don't need them normally, I just have them now, because I didn't want to bring me a case out. Right! But, uh, if I look at a TV, I kind of see double vision. So I need these now when I'm uh, looking at any TV. Have computer games fucked up your eyes? A little bit, yeah. My well, eyes went square. Listen to your parents' kids. Your eyes will go square. <laughs> Listen, they're literally square right now. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Right, you have, you got to get on it. you got to get on the podcast. you got to get a snappy name too. Like. It's got to have a snappy name. What's what's turn around this podcast? When's it like from this to release? Uh, next Friday. Next Friday. Oh, you will try my best to have an ever Friday. Grand, grand. Shake you on that. All right, okay. That's physically on that. That will be going up next week as well. Next Friday, uh, next Friday. All right. Have a short name. Work in progress, but I will try and get well, some. you can change out. the name at any point. Like, <laughs> but I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I always do it in workshops. I always tell young people, Fuck, do it. If you're passionate, invest, do it. Here I am giving that. Inspiring. Well, you've locked and it here in. here I am myself, not doing my own thing. Quite literally, thousands of people ha- will have heard you by Friday saying, you will have a name and there is a podcast happening. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, you're committed to it now. Right, if you like gaming, it's just me shooting the shit. It might be your friend, it might not. There we go. Hopefully, have it over then. Good stuff. Right, where can people follow Lewis McGee? Did you know that the Louis McGee captained the Irish rugby team? I didn't know back that. Back in the day. And went on to become president of the IRFU. Did there you go. That. There you go. You learn something every day. It's you be all, all the time learning around me but not how, not how to drive a fucking Segway <laughs> <laughs> you know, good morning, okay. so where can people get you you can get me on Twitter it's uh, Louis L-O-U-I-E underscore M underscore and that's usually what I'm, uh, I'm on you won't find me on Facebook that's more for like family and all that yeah 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 and I'm on uh, I'm on Instagram as well I just act the bollocks on that on uh, Sonny Bukali Yes, Sonny Vukali. I'd like that. I'll put the descriptions in the bottom anyway, the links in the yeah, description of this. Snapchat and all that as well, same thing. It's all, if you're on one, you'll find me through all the other ones as well. Perfect stuff. Together. Perfect. And basically, we're going to have to put just the pressure on you to start your own fucking gaming podcast. Let's do it. Louis, <laughs> thank you very much. It's been a pleasure, brother. Hey, man. That was a pleasure. Never a pain. And there you have it. The mighty fucking Louis McGee. Fair play to him. But I'm going to hold him to that too. I'm going to hold it to it. I haven't gotten the name yet but he said he will have it out by friday so i'm gonna i can go back in and edit this at any stage i can stick it in the description but and failing that he should have it by next tuesday a name for his podcast because i'm gonna twist his arm there's a uh, it needs more gamer podcasts how good was that sound skin isn't he anyway right if you are listening on itunes and you haven't subscribed or no matter what platform whether it's Castbox, the android app it's on all of them whatever you're listening to I'm sure you found it do you know what i mean Hit subscribe, it'll pop up in your yoke twice a week with the Ramble Pod on Tuesdays, this one on Fridays. Uh, if you are on iTunes, we've got iTunes back on track, lads. We've got iTunes back on track. I can now see um, all reviews, comments, all the rest. If you have a five-star review in your pocket, lads, throw it out to Tom there. If you don't have a five-star, keep it in the pocket and give it to somebody else. Five stars is what we need on this thing to drive us up the, up the tracks a small bit so people can find us a bit easier. I'd love a comment. I'd love an owl comment in there. Throw in something gastro for fuck's sake. So why not? It'd be mighty altogether. Like I said, you can find me on all the other platforms, whether it be Tom or Manny Comedy, we'll find you on nearly all forms, whether that's Instagram, Twitter, and uh, what's the fucking other one? Facebook. Uh, also, uh, Chatty Snaps, because I'm getting a lot of Chatty Snaps people. Fair play to you. Tom, Bear, or Manny, all one word will find you on that, because they haven't allowed me to change that. I don't know why, but that's where you'll find me. 
Anyway, moving swiftly along, like I said, you can catch me next week in a bunch of comedy clubs around the place. But don't worry, I'll be talking to you about it anyway. Keep it real. I want photographs from the weekend. Wherever you're listening to the Ramble Pod or wherever you're listening to this one, send me a photograph. Sure, fuck it. If you're chasing a chicken around the field, if you're drinking pints, if you're cooking a sausage, if you're fucking picking your nose, I don't care. Send it on. Anyway, right. Have a good weekend and I'll talk to you on Tuesday.